Welcome, welcome, Martina Andersen. I'm so happy to have you here. Here, very welcome. Mar uh, Martina is the ch uh, chief financial officer of Hillet Norton Strategy, a global peer and communication company, and you are heading the, the Finnish subsidiary. Tell Martina a little bit about your backstory. Why are you there, and what have you done? Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to to uh, see you again, uh, this, this time virtually. <laughs> yes, uh, I have a long history with HNK strategies. I, uh, I uh, um, joined already when this was a, a family-owned company and I've been through the process during many years and seen many ups and downs and, and, still, I, and uh, still I enjoy the work every day. Wow. I mean, Ma Martina, you did the strategy one-pager process and, and you had that reason. But, uh, tell, tell us a little bit that what was the thing that triggered the need to renew your strategy? I think every leader comes to a point where there is a, a, some kind of frustration, that you find that you, okay. you need to renew yourself and the company and the ideas. And I think in our market, especially in professional service, in PR and marketing, there's a lot happening at, the, at this time. There's a change in digital, there's no advertising agencies anymore. So we are more or less all competing on the same platform. So we needed something new. You needed something new, yeah. But you are known for a very high quality company and that was the first thing I experienced when I talked with you. So this, this, you know, this fight between quality and growth. Yes. How would you, how would you comment that, Martin? Yes, I think you know, we are so engaged with our clients and we want them to, to look successful. And, and I think that's why we, we forget about ourselves sometimes. Okay. And, and that's what happens. And the quality is the main reason why we are so, uh, so successful in Finland and all over the world. So perhaps uh, we just needed some, somebody to help us in our own strategy because we sell strategies to our clients. Yeah, yeah. And uh, may I still ask you some question about the situation? So, I mean, when you say help you with your own strategy, does that mean that in a way you, you did not have time to, to think on the bigger things meanwhile you were serving your clients? Is that the case? Yes, this is exactly the, the, the issue. In our business, time is money and we focus a lot of time or almost all time on our clients and forget about our own needs. And uh, as being part of a big uh, international company, we all know that we have a lot of pressure on, on profits and growth. Yeah, yeah. So that means that this kind of coming together and starting to think on strategy is not the, the priority number one. But every, then every now and uh, now and then you have to do it, and this was the time, yeah. Yes, so it, and, and I just saw that it's exactly a year ago when I made the phone call to Marcus. Yeah. That, Please, Marcus, can you help us a bit <laughs> on our way? Yeah, yeah, and then we met, and then we started the process. What do you remember about how the, how we did the whole thing? Can you tell us a little bit? There. Uh, Main, the main uh, contact with you was virtual. So I, I already said in the beginning that I think that you are better uh, when you manage the orchestra out of your uh, office because it, the process was really efficient and you forced us to make decisions and you forced us to meet because otherwise I know that, that we would have postponed a lot of the meetings. Yes, you know? we put in the schedule. And yeah, because that. now they were in the schedule and you were pretty tough with us. <laughs> yeah, we did the step-by-step step 
step uh, process together. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have t- told so many other clients about that that when I asked you that should we meet, and Martina said that no, don't come. You are better there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's don't take it personal. Mark. I took it. <laughs> no, I just, kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I I I know that you didn't mean it. Yeah. I think it was a marvelous sentence, and I. I quoted it, by the way, last week. You did? Yeah, I have quoted it over 10 times. I think it was marvelous, your comments. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, so we had a schedule and you went step by step through it. How did we, uh, how did we involve people? How many did you involve? And uh, the very first, uh, in the beginning, we already thought that now, as we are only 40 here in the Helsinki office, we all sit in one one big office, we thought that why don't we involve everyone? So actually what we did was that we we had some steering group meeting and then we went live. So everybody were by their computers and started the process. And I can tell you it was pretty stressful with all these tools that we had, but it forced us to to think out of the box and to, to think new ideas and not to, to, to be in our office and doing the same things as we always yeah. do. Yeah, so when you said we had these tools, so we had the Zoom software for the meeting to, to share the videos uh, of our faces like we are sharing now in Zoom. And, and then we had, uh, and I, I divided you in group rooms, and then we had these Trello, uh, Trello boards where everybody could write their comments at the same time. How did people, what, what kind of comment did you get, Martina, from that? I think they were really happy about uh, being involved in the process and they felt proud of being part of the team. I could see some, you know, the backbone of the company, there was a stretch in everybody. Uh, like I saw that that they really tried their best to, to come out with new ideas. And there was a feedback, you always asked for feedback and I could see that that everybody Almost everybody put their comments in. Yeah, and they brought it was a their nice comments. Process when you interviewed and then involved also other team members. So it was not only you who spoke. So no. we had different persons. So everybody was involved in the yeah. process. And the nice thing with this Trello is that everybody can talk at the same time. They can write their comment and then we picked a few to, to speak during a digital workshop meeting. Yeah, no. I think the, 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 perhaps the most difficult was then to choose from all the different, uh, because uh, it was like a brainstorming session. So there was yeah. a lot of material. So what do we then pinpoint and what do we then take out of, of to the bigger picture? Yeah, the pinpointing and the prioritization is really the problem and the skill. So it's like a big funnel that we had a lot of, I think about 400 comments in the beginning, and then you pinpoint and then you put them into the funnel and out comes just a few priorities. Yeah, it's and I think the steering meetings were really good because then we could uh, perhaps uh, take something out and put more effort on, on certain areas and perhaps then disclose yeah. other ones. So yeah. I think... The meetings in between were also very efficient. Very, very efficient, yeah. And, and uh, so people need a meeting. Now, now in, in, uh, we, we are doing a completely digital ones, but you can put in your own meetings there also, of course, and have your, have your, uh, your crew to join the whole thing. But I think these experiences are so important that you tell people how this can work. Yeah. And the young people, when many of them said that they are the first time doing strategy, Yes, and yeah. I think perhaps this process tells people that it's not so dangerous, it's nothing to be afraid of. No, I mean, it's, it's a normal process, so actually you should not perhaps do it so, so very official. You, no. could, you could call it something else, just yeah. taking part of a brainstorming. Yeah. 
And we are more and more thinking on that the strategy work should be continuous. We had had also comments here in the interviews that we, we should have a continuous strategy work, that it's nothing else than to find the big boulders of the company that you have to move, you know, what are the big things? Mm. So, so the next thing is that, uh, I mean, many companies just, you know, serve clients and, and I call it go with the flow. And it's a, in a way a marvelous situation if you can be successful like that. But many of us have more ambition than that. So what would be, uh, Martina, your advice to, to companies who don't have a written strategy yet? Should they have one or should they not? Definitely they should. And uh, I mean, markets uh, change, people change, companies change. There's a lot of change going on so definitely you need some kind of roadmap something it's like driving a car you need to know where you are heading yeah it's it's a quite good metaphor mm. and you, you need to have a and you you need to make many turns it's yes. not a straight line <laughs> yeah. and you need sometimes you need to just drive and think that hopefully this will lead to <laughs> the goal yeah because yeah. nobody knows how it all will end no you don't know what kind of traffic comes from that direction and what kind of traffic comes from here and you have to make a stop let mm. somebody go and there can be red lights coming up yeah <laughs> that's a good metaphor i have i haven't heard this one martina before i think it's a wonderful thing but what let's say what if you would just pinpoint one main benefit of having a strategy on one page what would that be just one i have a lot but uh, but in our case, the biggest one yeah i think it's just to to get uh, change happening actually so okay. that you for instance, in a mature company, so that, that we actually now think that we need to be more digital or we need to, to be better in marketing or whatever. So I think it's the change. And actually then with the roadmap, you actually then need to, to, to see that it, it will be implemented. Yeah. That, the, that, the main challenge. Yeah, the, the implementation is the big challenge. And, and then, uh, so what have went well and what, what have been the, the, the pitfalls? Start with those, uh, what have went smoothly in the implementation? What would you say? I think the, the, the shorter, the, the smaller the actual goals are, the better. Because okay. we divided our goals into separate different groups. And then I think the challenge is with the long ones. I think the long, longest, the longest we have are one year. So I think that's perhaps too long. It should have been divided into quarters. Yeah. Like three but months. There is this choices. nice invention called the scissors. So yeah. you just put it in pieces. Yeah. Yeah. How and about perhaps to, to, to keep up with the momentum so that people are actually really engaged and they want to see things happening so so that's the perhaps the pitfall that how, how did you do the, the kind of management system how did you follow up and we how? follow up with with which we still follow your roadmap with the different uh, phase uh, phase one phase two and so on on all these different tasks that came out from the roadmap yeah yeah, yeah. So, and and we have like one person who is involved and is uh, checking that 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 we follow that yeah okay oh yeah okay so you have a one person that that is updating the map all the time okay yes because as as we all know we need yeah. carrots and whips don't yeah. we all yeah yeah and, and what would you say is the the biggest challenge in the whole thing now in the implementation phase it's uh, uh, it's uh, about keeping the momentum and and actually perhaps then uh, starting a new process after now now we this uh, one page has been alive for a year so perhaps after the summer we need to to check it to have a checkpoint and see if it's accurate still yeah, probably many of the goals uh, many of the goals you have reached already and, and you have to prioritize again new ones. Is, yes. 
let's talk a little bit, Martina, about the fight between different things that you could do. The, the noble art of prioritization. What, it, what is your learning about that? I think it's, it's about doing tough decisions. So you see, what is now working? So uh, if you just look at your company, you can see that you have things that are, are going like a train. You see yeah. that the, the, the process is there. It might need some help, but it's not your priority. I think you should see in, in, into the future and see what, what the company has for possibilities for growth yeah. or new, er, new areas of business. Do you need to, to skip something old and, and build new, new things? So I think it's, it's about that. And, and often people talk about the commitment of top management. And, and uh, so how would you like to, what is your experience of getting the whole management team to be committed? What is yeah, it's, it's, it's as in our business, it's all about communication. It's all about You need to have, it's, it's as the French say, répéter, écouter. So it's about just uh, um, remembering every staff meeting, every big gathering, you need to uh, speak uh, the same language as your roadmap and, and your strategy. Hey, you mentioned the word language, Martina. That's an interesting one. Did you... I mean, when we, when we wrote the one page, we got a certain terminology. Uh, so, did you notice the shift in, in language terms started people to talk about the strategy in another way. Did you not think anything like that? Yes, I think uh, especially the, we divided into three, diff, uh, three main focus. So I think especially one of them was something that, that people started to talk about and, and they got involved and I, I got questions about different tools, new tools, for analyzing data and so on. So I felt like, like the discussion was not only on, on, uh, on consultancy services, it was more about the investment we need to do in order to serve our clients better. Okay, yeah, that's interesting also. So, um, so you, you also, uh, what would be your, your top advice to those who know you as here uh, about, do, about implementing a process like that. What have you learned? What would the top advice be? No, I think, you know, joining, uh, the, the most important thing is that you can't do it alone. A company needs to have some sort of facilitator, somebody helping them out because you always start to discuss minor details when you, you start the process. Somebody has a hidden agenda, something. So there needs to be somebody who, who does the orchestrating of the process. And then I think, uh, and, and perhaps the most important thing is to, to actually get, after we have the one page, to actually get the, the change happening. Yeah. So I think that's that's the, the you should focus on on that. So what is your magical stick on the happening? How how will it happen? I think in our case, as I mentioned, that that we don't have that much time because we serve our clients. So I think it's it's about controlling the process from day one, so yeah. that they actually if people realize that this is something that is important for the company. Yeah, and the control in practice is what? <laughs> ah, <laughs> it's about time scheduling, seeing that people actually are doing their homework, that, that you come on time for meetings and, and, and you have new ideas. You make tough decisions. What is your, uh, yeah, exactly, Martina, what is your uh, meeting structure? How often does the top, uh, top, uh, management team meet? The management teams, we meet uh, every, every uh, two weeks 
as yep. a as a, a larger group, and then once in a month as as the the very small steering group. Okay. So I think that's enough. Uh, two for, two meetings in a month, yeah. Yeah. One large, a little bit larger, and one little bit smaller. Yeah. But and then in the streams. They have a meeting, so we have these uh, four week, uh, four, fourteen days sprints, which which are then the 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 big the big streams are divided into small projects, and they have these two week intervals. Yeah, yeah. So you're implementing the, the sprint management as I call it. Yes, and I think you know it doesn't get better if if you have thirty days. Because then you just postpone it for two weeks and start yeah. on the third or fourth week. So two weeks is, is, is pretty optimal. Martina, now when you mention sprint management, so please give a short, short overview of how, what, what is that and how is it done? Oh, it's, it's uh, you know, we have, a, we have a group of people. It can be in, in our case, I think we have... Uh, everything in between five and ten persons yeah one of these sprints and uh, at the beginning days they, they they put up the agenda and their goals for the two two week period and then they have a lot of 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 different tasks during the process in order to have something written on paper which they then can present to the management group yeah, so they, they, they select their work for two weeks and then they have a meeting and then they look how did the work go. So there is the backlog of, of work that has to be done. They select their something from that pile and then, uh, then uh, they have a check meeting after, after the sprint. So every sprint starts with the meeting and ends with the meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a marvelous system. I, I, I really, I'm a great fan of that system, yeah. And yes, and now we are, this spring we are in, implementing many of the sprints. Okay. So we will have a training session for all staff about coaching and uh, um, team leadership and that sort of, 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 yeah. of, of sprints. So, yeah. so everybody is, is really excited yeah. about the process. So, so Martina, some last questions now that uh, do you think it's important for a company to have a written strategy? Yes, it's definitely. Because it's like, like I said, driving a car without knowing where, where but, you are but, heading. But Martina, if you would have a five-person five company, a small one, so, so is it beneficial for them to have a written strategy? Definitely, because Why? even a small company, you need to prioritize. Because when you, That's the yeah. Yeah. if you establish the company, if you have limited resources, you need to be focused so that you can, you have something that you can get the growth from in order to invest money for the future. Yeah, you have to prioritize. And there are so many nice things that you could do. Mm. <laughs> and it's easy to get blinded and excited and many entrepreneurs, they have this, that they would like to take the whole world at yeah. one, one time. But, but you, you just need to have step by step and, yeah. and that's the way to do it. Yeah. Martina, thank you so, for, so much for sharing this to us. I think it's great to hear that. And, and many, many will learn many things that are important for the business. Thank you for, for all your knowledge and experience. Thank you very much and good luck, folks. <laughs> Thank you, Martina. Thank you. See, Bye. see you again. Bye.